All right, in this first part, what we're going to do here on our RC51 project bikes, we're going to go through the testing, the charging system, and some of those common tests from battery testing to parasitic draw, current, which is current leakage. We're going to do uh, stator uh, output testing, stator resistance testing, so we get multiple functions of our meter, DC volts, amps, and uh, um, ohms as well. So the bike is actually hooked up 100% stock right now, and what we're going to do is we're real quickly just going to show how we hook up and test the battery. So first off, a DC, one of our meters here on DC volts. So what we show here, this is a maintenance-free battery, and we're showing 12.55 volts. Realistically, that's a little low, but we've started the bike a couple of times, which means we've kind of drained some of that surface voltage off. What we do not want to do is... Let me get that on there a little better. Get that out of the way. What we don't want to do is consider that that means the battery's good, okay? So what, from there, what we do is we do a traditional method of a load tester. And with this load tester, we could take and we put these heavy duty clamps on here, once again, battery out of the machine. And this gives us our surface, surface voltage reading. And then when I hit this button here, what that does is it cranks down an internal load on the battery to see if the battery doesn't fall less than nine volts, okay? If it falls less than nine volts, as you can see, it's gonna register bad. Maintenance free batteries typically fall to about 10 volts. Conventional batteries fall to that nine range and then it just holds there. If it leaks down, the battery either needs charge to replace and you can see some of our other videos for that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the bike starter as a way to measure the, the load testing of this battery. So let's bring this meter closer here. Why don't you go ahead and just set it like that. You could see obviously we're hooked up. You could see what our voltage is. I'm gonna go ahead and start the motorcycle and what we're looking for on the load testing here, why don't you students tell me, is we want no less than what? Um, nine. nine volts. So as we crank this over with the starter, if that gets less than nine volts, we have a battery issue of just needing charged or replaced. So let's check out and see what happens. Kind of a noisy RC51 and a pretty yeah. cool bike. What we're gonna do is, and do you notice how just for running for a couple of seconds, would the battery jump up to? 12.9. And it actually, I saw 13 on there. In a couple of seconds of running, this thing jumped up to 13 volts from that 12.5. That's just surface voltage in there that the charging system is just pumped in there right now. This bike, can you back up on the camera and show that there's no headlights? There's no tail lights. We're in the, in the process of building this race bike and we don't have any of that street equipment hooked up on this. So we don't have a lot of draw on the electrical system. So what you noticed at idle is that this was jumping up into that 14, 14, three or four range or whatnot. We have to, per the service manual, run this to a certain RPM. It's gonna get kind of loud on the video and check what's called our break-even voltage to make sure that the system isn't also overcharging um, or not working through, uh, through that range. A lot of motorcycles out there, especially your older bikes, at idle do not produce charging voltage. And so if you just hook up a, a voltmeter like this to the battery and try to check for battery charging and you don't rev it to the specified break-even, if, if I just go and go, oh, I only have battery voltage, I'm going to say there's something wrong with the system. I'm going to checking a bunch of stuff that I don't need to. So, Tyler, go ahead and hold that for us again. We'll fire up the bike. Notice how it's getting hard to start? Because we're draining that down. Okay. Manual, please. What we're going to do is we know that our bike's working fine, but we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the tests that we would do to test the components individually. So we're going to start with a parasitic draw test. Let's go ahead and switch meters. Now, per the manual, says to disconnect the negative post. Thanks, Brent. Okay.
Okay, let's show set your meter right here. So what you're going to see here is when you do amp testing, we need to complete the system in what we call a series test. You have to watch some of our other videos for more information on that. But in the series test, we need to go through the meter. So what we want to do to not have a negative sign show up on this is we're going to go ahead and hook our positive up to our cable because the battery flow right now is going from the battery through the motorcycle electronics through the negative cable. Now we're going to go through the meter, out of the meter, and then we're going to go ultimately to ground with the ground cable here. Okay. What you're going to see right here is the service manual also tells us always start on the largest range. And on this particular bike, per the manual, can I see that manual again? Let me just show the spec on that. It says that the maximum current leakage that we want to see is one tenth of a milliamp here. Okay? That's the maximum, one tenth of a milliamp. Okay? Now, when I start with this largest range, you're going to see that I got this kind of dancing back here. Every once in a while, you see that one that's dancing over there? Well, that really is a problem for us. Now we're going to switch to the smaller range. We're going to go ahead and we're going to be able to see now that one's showing itself. So that's one milliamp. Okay, the key's in the off position, but it says the most we're supposed to have, and this is why this one's confusing, is we're actually only supposed to have one-tenth. We should be on the other side of that decimal. So we have a pretty excessive draw. Per the service manual, they tell us right away the next step, as we follow through here, it says if this problem is present, as we use our troubleshooting chart, chart it says, uh, where did you find that? Disconnect the regulator and rectifier. So this says incorrect we go here and follow these steps. So that's how uh, a great way to use uh, troubleshooting charts. So let's just go ahead and do that. That component right here, you just see here when I disconnect this, did our problem go away? Most of it. We still have the clock hooked up and some other things, but we got down into a much smaller number here, not completely. But if we were to take now, we still see that we have a draw there. So what we could do is we can go ahead and start disconnecting fuses one at a time. So here, if we start looking at our fuses here, here's an odometer one. As I pull that one, we went to zero. Now I could have, show the camera up here, I could have disconnected the actual connector here. And you could go around, you could keep just disconnecting things until your problem goes away. And what's really nice about that is you know where it exists. This, this number is really, really, really super small here. But what we find to be interesting is we've already been playing around and diagnosing this bike. And go ahead and go back here. Let's move our meter back to here. Okay, this is the regular rectifier on this RC51. And one thing I, I knew and noticed about this motorcycle is this is not stock. Here's an actual stock one. You see it's much larger in size. My connectors are exactly the same but this is an OEM one, okay? Now I wanna show you something that's pretty interesting here. So we're gonna go ahead and once again, uh, we have this disconnected here. I'm gonna go ahead and fully disconnect the stator side of it too, okay? We have no change in anything. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up a stock OEM one. Yeah, you can grab that, Brent. Okay, now remember we had that one before, right? So now as we have this, we're, we're basically holding this onto the chassis here. I'll go ahead and even just hook it up fully. Okay, we've got this, you know, resting on here. It's not the same as being bolted on. So this one's disconnected and you can see what we have happening here. So watch this, just to prove a point, we do a lot of things around here called ABA testing. I'm gonna go ahead and Okay, I'm going to switch back to this aftermarket one, the one where we think we have the problem, and look at our problems back. Okay, so we know something's going on. Problem present with this one, but the one thing we haven't done is actually ran the bike to see if the charging system still works. So go back to DC volts.
So what you could see through our testing, we'll come back around on this side, is that for whatever reason, this aftermarket, and we weren't looking for a problem, we, weren't, we didn't like have a complaint like, hey, the battery's going dead or anything else. This would draw the battery dead though, super fast. When it's only supposed to be one-tenth of a milliamp and it was drawing a uh, one milliamp, that would definitely drain the battery a lot faster. Now, the only way we'd really know how long is to leave it on there, measure it each day, and then see how long it would take before the bike wouldn't start. But great example of how to identify that, just disconnecting things, find the source, and then fortunately for us, we had a different one to exchange out. The service manual does just say to replace the part. There's no test for this when that current draws like that. It's just replace the part. It's a problem, and that's exactly what we did. All right. We're going to move to another part of the video here and we're going to test the coil, the stator coil that's in here and that's what comes up to this connector. So we're going to go ahead and set it up for ohms. Let's grab that. Okay, and I'm going to let's see if you guys remember this from your train because you guys were using the training boards weren't you mm -hmm. yep. okay, so what I'm gonna do is just make it easier here and we're going to we have to, we have a coil in there with three windings and what we want to do is we want to test between all those windings okay so hook up two leads just hold this please And it is best to use alligator clips and leave it alone, okay? Harold our leads to take out any potential resistant in the leads themselves. So now we're going to go ahead and hook across the stator. It's fine without the fuse in it, okay? Let's go ahead and test that. All right, we're just going to go one leg to another. Point, point 0.5, that one's good. Switch it. Those fuses really throw us off on those poor leads, aren't it? Yeah. 0.5, now switch the middle one over. So the continuity between all those is good. And even if we went to 0 0.6, we had 0.1 of, uh, of resistance in there. We would subtract that from those. So we're, we're good. We're within our spec. So now we just take one side of this. And we're going to go to the negative battery cable here since we're still hooked up and we should have nothing okay we know they all have continuity to each other so we don't need to switch in between each of those so this tape this stator's testing good which we would expect it to what we're going to do next and this is why i don't think you guys have done yet is we're going to do an ac output test so that means we need to run the motorcycle we're going to just simply switch our meter we don't have to switch leads we're going to go to ac volts we're going to go ahead and start the motorcycle let's see we do that yeah, and uh, can I see the manual? I'm going to see what the spec is, if they give us an AC output spec. All right, go ahead and fire up the motorcycle. What you're able to see here... Hold, hold that. What you're able to see... You've got to be hooked up across two coils. We're making 20 C8, 27 AC volts across those two. I go here, 27, and I go here, I have 27. Go ahead and rev it up to 5,000. What we saw is at idle, we had what, 25, 26 volts AC mm -hmm. across all three legs. What we want is we want them to be equal. I mean, if we had 20 across all three of them, remember in that Suzuki video, that mechanic to mechanic video, they talked about, you know, even if the spec was a little low or a little high, as long as they were all the same, the stator's probably good. It's just how many times it's wound around there. And then you notice as we revved it, do you see how high that AC voltage got? Mm -hmm. That is exactly why, so at idle, we have 26 volts AC, we're going to rectify it, change it to DC volts, and we don't want any more than 15.5 going into the battery. You can see how important it is to rev the engine up, 
because at 86 volts AC, does this regular rectifier have a lot bigger job to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, guys. That's uh, some multiple ways that you can test the uh, charging system on your uh, motorcycle. It's very similar from one model to another.